The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones. With its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody, unclean and suffering from separation of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. And with that, welcome to another episode of Creeps, Creatures, and Haunts. Oh my. And that was a quote from Basil H. Johnson from the tribe. We just looked up how to say it. Ojibwe, a scholar from Ontario. I thought it was a creepy little uh, thing to kind of enter the video with for the Wendigo. Uh... If you have not listened to this before, this is a podcast where we talk about creepy stuff. Yeah. Um, we just kind of pick a topic each week. Sometimes, I mean, we've even done like film reviews on this and stuff. It's just kind of whatever we want, but it's always going to be related to the horror genre in some way. So if you have found your way to this from our um, Haunt Talk series, we review Haunted Houses because we've plugged this a lot on that. Welcome. We had a, like, two-month sabbatical, you know, because September and October we had so many haunt reviews where we weren't doing the podcast, but now the haunt season's over, we are back at it. Me and Kim recently went and saw the movie Antlers, which, um, if you're unaware, it's about the Wendigo. I feel like it was pretty well advertised, and literally, like, the opening of the movie says it's about the Wendigo. Yeah. So I'm not going to yeah. consider it a spoiler. We're probably going to have a little light review of that movie, I think, kind of we'll talk about it a little bit, too, of um, Antlers. I was personally kind of disappointed about it. I don't know. It was good. It wasn't what I expected. Like, I, I kind of... I, I don't know. I expected more. Yeah, it... And again, I don't want to give spoilers to the movie because it's still in theaters and yeah. all of that. Maybe we'll do, a, maybe we'll start doing film reviews or something where we do spoiler talks and that. We've done it before, but uh, yeah, I, w I was looking for a little bit more. It fell a little flat, and I don't know, it just didn't really do much for me. It kind of seemed like by the book, like there's a throwaway Native American character who yeah. is literally there just to tell you that the Wendigo is <laughs> a thing to be scared of. Right, yeah, And exactly. just a lot of things like that that kind of irked me a little bit about mm -hmm. it. Um, like the creature design of the Wendigo I thought was pretty cool, and you do get to see it. Yeah. But there's also just some really kind of stupid things that, that, that happened uh, in the movie. But... Watching it, though, I'm like, you know, I don't really know too much about the Wendigo, and it is obviously a very popular thing. It's been a, in a lot of, like, shows, like Supernatural, I know it was mm -hmm. in a few times, and so I thought it would be kind of interesting to do an episode on it, and since it's topical, because I know that a lot of people were really excited for Antlers, because it got yeah. delayed and delayed and delayed again. I was really excited for it. Um... But out of all the horror movies I was looking forward to, like that, you know, we just went and watched Last Night in Soho, um, there was, uh, what was, uh, Halloween Kills, and what was the one other horror movie we just saw? There's one other one that we just saw. What was it? Oh, that's where you haven't seen it yet, but Malignant, that was oh, the yeah, other, that yeah, was yeah. the other big one that I saw. This one was, um, unfortunately my least favorite and it was my most anticipated but <laughs> we still got a lot of great movies this year uh so that is good so if you're interested in listening to us talk about these movies like reviews you know let us know if that's something that you would like to see us do i do have to mention that um if you've seen the horrible documentary and i'm using air quotes if you're watching this or if you're listening to this in a podcast, I'm using air quotes because it's not a documentary at all. Um, but they did a documentary on the Travel Channel for Helltown. And one of the main focus creatures that they claim is in Helltown is a Wendigo. Well, you know, <laughs> um, which we'll get into it more here, but Ohio, Great Lakes is where yeah. this thing is. I don't even remember. I watched this documentary. I think we watched it together. Yeah. Um, it was terrible. It's it not a documentary. Really, really yeah, it's yeah. really bad. Really it's so awful. And we do have an episode on Health Town to make sure you watch that. Make sure you watch all of our videos. Yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're watching this video for me. You should still go do that if you're listening to the podcast. And also make sure you, um, no, we're not going to do that yet. Don't you do that. <laughs> we probably should. So. <laughs> Kim has a has a bell that she like physically rings here. I don't know if I'm going to allow it for the podcast. Because I feel like for the viewer that doesn't see you grabbing the bell, you might literally startle them to the point of them crashing in the car. For the few people that do listen to this, um, just fling off their beats. They're like, 
Yeah, so like maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we won't do the ring a ling a ding a ling bell oh. in this video. Um, oh. Maybe we will. Maybe from just, afar. Maybe from afar. Like so over it's here. yes, yes. Maybe maybe we'll do that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, make sure you do wherever you listen to your podcast. Subscribe to us so you get all of those yes. push feeds. And we have a Patreon. Check that out too. Yeah. It would be absolutely awesome of you. But that being said, uh, we're going to just kind of go over some stuff about the Wendigo here. So if you don't know what the Wendigo is, let me tell you. <laughs> so it's a mythological creature or evil spirit. Uh, it originates from folklore from Native Americans, uh, First Nations, based in and around the east coasts of Canada, uh, the Great Plains region of the United States, and the Great Lakes region of the United States and Canada. So, I mean, I guess that would like, what? I mean, Great Lakes is, I mean, Cleveland. Yeah. So maybe. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, we can see Canada for in Cedar Point on certain roller coasters. <laughs> yeah, that's so. true. It's a great that Wendigo is... viewing spot. I guess. You know, we have like Rougarou and stuff like that. Why? We should have a Wendigo coaster. Yeah, maybe that'll be the new roller coaster. Yeah, Kings Island. I mean, they're not really Great Lakes, but Kings Island loves doing creepy stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cedar Point should like jump on that train. Do a Wendigo. You know? yeah, do, do the a, Wendigo. Do a Wendigo thing. That'd be fun. Um, it's grouped in modern and anthology, which basically anthology is, like I forget. Ethnic. Yeah, it's like mythology. Like eth- yeah, eth- that's, that's, yeah, I was trying to think of a way to put it into words, but yeah, <laughs> essentially. And unfortunately, I'm hoping we don't butcher a lot of these things. As speakers of the Algonquian, is that how you say that? Algonquian Ooh, family sure. languages. Uh. The Wendigo is often said to be a malevolent spirit, sometimes depicted as a creature with human-like characteristics which possesses human beings. The Wendigo is also known to invoke feelings of insatiable greed and hunger, the desire to cannibalize other humans so to just eat them all up, num num num, mm-hmm. as well as the pr- propensity to commit murder and those that fall under its influence. And this is essentially, this is what that movie was about, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the Wendigo spirit can hop from people and make them do crazy stuff. I don't think it dealt too much with cannibalism, I guess, but, well, the Wendigo, oh, like, ate I mean, people. Yeah, but he if was it was supposed eating. to be the people. Eh. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, as the, so, like, as far as the origin stories of the Wendigo goes, there's a lot of different variations, but, like, one tale that is told a lot of where the Wendigo came from. Uh, it was a lost hunter during a brutally cold winter. The man you got really hungry. He was, you know, basically dying of starvation and it drove him to cannibalism. And after feasting on one of his fellow man's um, flesh, he transformed into a crazed man beast and then he roamed the forest in search of more people to eat. So, yeah, a lot of the theme, and you'll see this a lot of in, like, I feel, uh, like, Native American folklore, is it kind of deals with people, like, becoming basically something evil, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and the Wendigo is, like, an antithesis of that. Yeah, like, um, what I got was it was basically, um, like, people who become, uh, like, destroy the environment, insatiable greed. Yes, there's a lot of, like, Um, just negative things, like... yeah. You know, people that, yeah, are just kind of, like, nasty people kind of can essentially become this creature. Yeah, it, like, smells really awful, like, f- like rotting flesh. Um, it says it's to have a heart of ice, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, I don't know if that means, like, literal or if it's, I think it's just, you know... Like its heart, like maybe its blood's cold. Maybe because I can't imagine there's just yeah. like ice inside of it. It is weird that it words it that way, but you know. Um, and then there's also like you'll feel a chill if it's nearby. Mm-hmm. Like it'll get very very cold. And uh, it's funny because uh, one of the things that is most popular with the Wendigo, like in any like depiction you see of it, is they always have antlers or horns, and that actually isn't in any of the original stories at all. Right, which is which is hilarious because like literally the movie Antlers is called Antlers, Antlers based off of the Wendigo's Antlers and that is something that's just kind of been, you know, as the stories progressed, it's just been kind of added in. I feel like it's been uh, more probably by American culture yeah. or, you know, Canadian, whatever, on when they were telling these stories from, you know, Native Americans, like Antlers just kind of got added into the depiction probably to add a creep factor and that's just like... Yeah. How we see it in most, like, artistic representations and mm-hmm. such like that. I th- I find that interesting with a lot of just, like, stories in general. You know, like, the story that we end up 
end up with from like old folklore. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, I just find that funny. It's just completely, completely different down to where, you know, the Hollywood film Antlers is called Antlers. And it <laughs> does not even a feature that was specified on that. And in a lot of the Native American, diff- like the different tribes and that, you know, it's described as they, they're very, they're very large creatures. Like, you know, they tower, like, from what I've seen, like depictions of like, um, almost like this, like they can be like half as tall as a tree, some like mm-hmm. as tall as like smaller trees and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of it, a lot of the folklore talks about whenever one, another Wendigo eats another person, it would grow in proportion to the meal it had just eaten. Um, so it could never be full. Therefore, Wendigos are portrayed as simultaneously gluttonous and extremely thin due to starvation. And I find that, like, that kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just so gluttonous in that that, like, it, it's it's emaciated, but it just never quits growing. Yeah. Because it's this hunger. It's just the more it eats, the more it starves. Yeah. And, you know, that's just it. And it goes with the theme of it talking about how people who are extremely greedy and extremely mm-hmm. full of lust, you know, it really goes with that theme um, well. Yeah, it said that uh, in some traditions, humans overpowered by greed could turn into Wendigos. Um, it uh, kind of encouraged people to um, moderate their intake and to cooperate with each other so they didn't seem as greedy and gluttonous. Um, and then also there was the whole thing about human cannibalism, uh, people resorting to cannibalism to survive essentially will become the Wendigo and, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's just, almost uh, it's almost like a PS. It's like an old school PSA. Like, yeah, don't eat people. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, don't eat people. <laughs> well, I feel like you know, <laughs> you're like, gonna turn into this mythological creature. <laughs> hundreds, thousands, years, whatever. Like, you know, like back then, it was probably a thing that happened, especially in native tribes. I would assume it would be something that happened. I wouldn't say like often, often, but with the harsh conditions and like yeah, starvation and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and like so if like, you got separated and like there was a small group and you didn't have anything, you might resort to that. Because kind of like thing. no one, like I don't think, probably said, "Oh yeah, cannibalism is cool." You know, it's just thing that happens. You're like, well, well, I mean, unless you're the Donner Party. Well, and you know, and a lot of like these things start from a lesson i mean you look like greek mythology and stuff like that it's all like a lot of it's like trying to teach people lessons you know you look Mm -hmm. at like modern religions as well you know there's all these stories that are like basically teaching you like don't do this thing or this will happen this is like you know (laughs) don't eat people or be greedy and stuff like this or you'll be some crazy not horned beast yeah (laughs) running around yeah you'll be some like a mace the best way i can describe it almost like in the pictures and stuff it almost looks like a like a horse on two legs or something that's like super super skinny. Like I I don't know. It's just like this weird like. I don't know. It's it's so weird. Hmm. Kind of that that's what it always reminds me of whenever I see pictures of like you know drawings or whatever. Obviously, there's no pictures of a Wendigo, but right. Um, <laughs> like drawing depictions and stuff. It looks like almost like a humanoid horse. Right thing. Mm-hmm. That's just super skinny and just kind of like walking on two legs. Yeah. 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 I do think that um, I do like the representation of the Wendigo. I love like creepy, like creature designs like Mm -hmm. that. Um, I found this interesting. There's what's called. um, (laughs) It's basically, what is it called? The uh, Wendigo. Basically, it's a ceremony that was um, done by some of the different tribes. And man, it's so hard to say. There's the Asinboini, I think, the Cree, and the Ojibwa. I think is how I said it was pronounced at the beginning of this, which is a satirical ceremony dance is sometimes performed during times of famine to reinforce the seriousness of the Wendigo taboo. So basically what that is meaning that, you know, they would, <laughs> in times of like extreme hunger, they would have this ceremony. Um, and yeah, this word is hilarious. I'm going to try and pronounce it. Again. <laughs> I'm reading it and um, I'm like, mm, <clears throat> well, luck. yeah, I'll continue. And then I'll comment the ceremony known as, <clears throat> Wendy Gook and Zihamowin, maybe. Gazunite. Yeah, was performed during times of famine and involved wearing masks and dancing backwards around a drum. The last known Wendigo ceremony conducting in the United States was at the Link Wendigo, a star island of Cass Lake, located within the Leech Lake Lindian 
Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota. So yeah, I mean, this is basically, you know, a ceremony that they just kind of did like when, in times of famine yeah. to like remind people like, don't eat others. Don't yeah. don't eat your don't, friends. Like, don't be oh, greedy. That's not cool. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. There's this whole like ritualistic ceremony they would do to like remind each other that we just should not um, eat each other. Yeah. Which even, leads us. Even though you're yeah. hungry. Don't eat your friend. Which all this talk about cannibalism um, um, <laughs> has really uh, leads us into like, the, and then the next thing, which I'll let you kind of cover. It's interesting as well. Um, yeah. So there is actually a um, modern psychiatry psychosis called Wendigo psychosis. Which is an intense <laughs> craving for human flesh and an intense fear of becoming a cannibal. Yes, yeah, so that's literally a term that's still used, I guess. Yeah. Um, that describes that. Mm-hmm. And um, th- other symptoms include insatiable greed and destruction of the environment. People think that they've been possessed by the Wendigo, and that's why they have this, and that leads them to cannibalism which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Yeah, it's... It's in- it's really crazy. Like, they've actually killed the person to prevent cannibalism. Like, they haven't <clears throat> even actually eaten anybody, but they're like, they might. Well, right, because, I mean, <laughs> like, the belief of the Wendigo was so ingrained, I think, in the society that, like, you know, people were like, oh, you know, we think they might be possessed by the Wendigo and we don't want them to start eating up people, so, you know, yeah. they would kind of murder them. But it's still a term, like, I think used for people that, like... Have like and, and like not necessarily the, that um, it's always being believed that they're possessed by the Wendigo, but people that are just kind of like eating people when it's not for any reason of survival, yeah. you know that they're just eating to eat people. Um, and this even says that the Cree folklore recommends treatment for the Wendigo psychosis yeah. by ingesting fatty animal meats or drinking animal grease. Yum. And that's going to, what? And so you eat all, maybe like because you're eating all this like fatty tissue. Um, those guess. treated may sometimes vomit ice as part of the curing process. So, I mean, maybe like when they yeah. said heart of ice, they physically mean a this thing ice. has a ice heart. Yeah. How how interesting. Yeah. Um, one of the more famous cases of Wendigo psychosis reported in, involved a... Plains Cree Trapper from Alberta, and I saw this in, when researching, I saw this on many different sites, many different like research documents. His name was Swift Runner. In the winter of 1878, him and his family were, were starving, and his eldest son died 25 miles from emergency for food supplies at Hudson Bay Company Post. Swift Runner butchered and ate his wife and five remaining children. Given that he resorted to cannibalism so near to food supplies, and that he killed and consumed the remains of all of those who were present, it was revealed that Swift Runner was not a case of pure cannibalism as a last resort to avoid starvation because they were basically real close at that point to the food. Um, you know, so they just basically said he was a man with Wendigo psychosis. So he ate them because it was cool. It was the thing to do. Yeah. The Wendigo is like, bro, eat your family. And he eventually uh, confessed and was executed by authorities at Fort... <laughs> Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> uh, that's like why? That's like, a lot of people to eat. That's a lot of people. He just like like his whole entire family killed and ate him, and that's like, you know what I mean? It could have been a thing like they were already close to food, but maybe like something was in his, you know, like he just kind of lost his sanity because maybe they'd been hungry for so long that even though they were close, he just kind of like snapped and just like yeah. But for like, all of them, it, it seems I don't know. That's that's weird. Um, like why? Well, why didn't he eat the eldest son? Like that died. Just eat him and yeah. then go get supplies. Like the whole family. He just, just was like, eh, I'm just gonna eat six people. <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> that's oof. Wow. All right. So another one is <laughs> um, Jack Fiddler, a OG Cree chief and medicine man known for his powers at defeating Wendigos. <laughs> in some cases, this in 
detailed killing people with the Wendigo psychosis. As a result, in 1907, Fiddler and his brother Joseph were arrested by the Canadian authorities for homicide. Jack committed suicide, but Joseph was tried and sentenced to life in prison. He ultimately was granted a pardon, but died three days later in jail before receiving the news of this pardon. Yeah. Um, wow. And I do believe, I don't remember for sure, but I think I read another article talking about this specific case that he, I think he killed himself. Um, and then they were like, no, you're free to go, but he's dead. Um, so, Yeah. Unlike other terrifying carnivores, the Wendigo doesn't rely on pursuing its prey in order to capture and eat it. Rather, one of its creepiest traits is its ability to mimic human voices. He uses this to kill, to lure people. Oh, he uses the skill to lure people in and draw them away from civilization. Once they're isolated in the depths of the wilderness, he attacks them and feasts on them. The Algonquin, I just, again, don't know if I'm saying that right. People say that during the 20th century, a large number of their people went missing. The tribes attributed this, attributed many of the mysteries, disappearances to the Wendigo, thus calling him the spirit of lonely places. So, I mean, yeah, they're just kind of like, oh, these people are disappearing, so, you know, the Wendigo <laughs> must be eating. I mean, maybe it was. I don't know. But there is also, like, this also reminds me a lot of, like, when you hear of, like, skinwalkers, which, you know, is Native American tribes. They yeah. will, like, mimic things. Some some people, like, describe them as, like, almost, like, magical-esque beings that can literally yeah, transform like, into animals. A lot of times they're, like, trick um, people medicine that. men that have pretty much gone mad and, like, been, like, totally consumed by the magical powers and they become yeah. this creature and i've heard like theories too that you know like that there is like correlation between uh, a skinwalker and a wendigo that a wendigo basically is a skinwalker but yeah all of that essentially to say that you know what i mean this is even an article here that i'm kind of reading that you know wendigo has kind of transformed from a story of an actual physical thing to being like a term used especially in a lot of like the native american tribes you know meaning of someone that's gluttonous someone that you know it's just kind of of ill intentions mm -hmm. and things like that i mean you know i mean they have the whole wendigo psychosis thing which you know is basically just like oh this person wants to eat some people or is eating people <laughs> it can be like a pretense <laughs> as well I guess that kind of makes sense now, because now that I keep thinking about it, um, you haven't watched it, but um, Hannibal, the TV series. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've watched it, but I haven't watched, like, the last season. I kind of okay. forgot well, it existed, but yeah, yeah there is they, a lot of Wendigo Yeah, they, like, transform there, him into a Wendigo, and I didn't get it at first. Yeah, because I didn't realize I that... now I actually, ma it makes sense. Yeah, I didn't realize there was so much association with, like, yeah. cannibalism um, and stuff like that. I do find that interesting. Um, people still hear it and report sightings of it to this day, actually, though, which, you know, wow. is counterintuitive of what we just said about it being more of a symbolic thing. But, oh, who knows? It could be a Wendigo. It could be another creature. It could just all be bullcrap, obviously, when you're dealing with <laughs> cryptids and stuff like that. But I didn't realize that the Wendigo was... It's it's more than just a cryptid story. Like it's it's so like ingrained and it's so old. And there's so many references to it. Like yeah. uh, Pet Cemetery has references to it as well. Oh yeah. There's like when they're walking through the woods. Like they don't necessarily like really. I don't know if they say. I know not at least in the remake they don't say when to go. But you do like see it briefly for a hot second. Walk behind a tree, mm. and you kind of hear it crying when they're going up to the like the the peak or whatever there in the mountains. Oh. Um, so there's there's a lot of like reference it to it in modern day culture. People believe that thing that's really popular, the rake, uh, that that might be a form of when to go. But uh, yeah, they mainly see it around Ontario, Canada, near the cave of the Wendigo, which is interesting. I think I still have the picture. Yeah, it's in. Oh man, Mama Guest Lake is is where this is where this thing is, and it is a little cave, and there is like little um, basically why they think. Well, I don't know why this is called the Wendigo Cave is because there's like paintings in this cave that are like ancient paint, like Native American paintings of like the Wendigo okay. essentially in this in this cave. So people say, you know, there's sightings there and, and stuff like that. It might just be one of those things where like you see what you expect to see. And if you're in a place where there's literally like paintings of a Wendigo on the wall, then you might think that. Um, and I did find an interesting story story um this was only from like a couple years ago uh i don't think i'm going to read the whole story but basically this guy and his wife were 
taking a hike out in the woods and this was at Point Beach State Forest in Two Rivers and this was in Mantua County in Wisconsin is, is where this was. They were taking a hike and they weren't familiar with the area and they were, you know, they were basically looking to hunt and stuff. So the guy had a bow and all of that with them. They saw, you know, what they thought. They thought it was a large buck. Um, so they proceeded down the trail to get a glimpse of it. They found that about 50 yards up where the trail opened into a stand of tall pines. It was behind a tree and at first appeared to be a bear on its back leg, scratching its back up against a tree trunk. It kept stepping to the side and I could see what looked like a shoulder and a really long arm, David said but it looked black, really black. So basically, I didn't think it was a bear. Uh, they followed it around for a little bit, um, and eventually they did see they did see it like up further. They followed it, and they um, describes it as, let's see here. It got down in all fours, and I thought I saw what would be its head, but it was very oddly shaped, almost like a football, which is, you know, typical to the descriptions, but horizontal with very long ears pointing up into the back, and I thought what I believed to be very long, almost grayish hair. I made it to be eight to ten feet tall with long, thin, gangly arms. He and his wife watched it briefly, unable to understand what they were looking at. Then it took three large steps and disappeared into the underbrush. So they started walking back, and they had heard a few noises. Um, when they walked out of the forest and into a field, they saw a deer there standing sideways in the open, a perfect shot. They had come out to hunt after all, so David rose his bow and knocked an arrow. I used light knocks so you can see the trajectory of my arrow, David said. When I shot, you could see that I shot low and heard something like my arrow hitting something. But I wasn't sure if I hit the deer or not, so we walked over there and started looking for my arrow. Still constantly, watch still constantly watching around near us, and we couldn't find my arrow anywhere. Then David spotted the glowing knock about 20 or 30 yards back towards the woods of the path. My arrow was stuck basically vertically in the ground, except for leaning in the opposite way that I shot, which to me and my wife seemed impossible that my arrow could be the way it was in the ground. As they made their way back to the road to leave, a strong odor filled the air. I smelled the most horrible smell I've ever smelled in my life, like rotten mud and sulfur, David wrote, a nasty smell that was just right in my face. His wife smelled it as well and later described it to him as a strong metallic odor of metal. They hurried back to the vehicle and went home and it still haunts David and basically he's like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back there and uh, hunt again because what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> But I kind of find that interesting. So, like, I mean, it's his assumption that, like, he shot and the Wendigo is like, I'm just going to pick up your arrow and put it in the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't Or know. it, like, deflected it because he was trying to shoot the deer and he was like, nah, not today. <laughs> Maybe with his magical Wendigo powers. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought there's, I couldn't find a lot of, like, um, Wendigo encounters and this one was pretty recent. I just kind of found that interesting. They kind of like saw this thing in the distance and then like the thing with the arrow being turned around and then he had it coupled with the smell at the end. Um, something that I would like to do sometime is they have this thing called Wendigo Fest in Manawak, Wisconsin as well, which looks cool. They have all kinds of people like dressing up like the Wendigo. It kind of reminds me of like the Krampus Fest that they have certain places, oh. but people dress up as the uh, Wendigo. They have dark art exhibits, spooky vendors, and I'm just like, oh man, this looks like a lot of fun. I would like to do that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it would be, I think it would be a cool event to, um go to i love i would like to go to all those events like they have like the mothman festival and stuff like that yeah. but yeah that's uh in a nutshell kind of you know the wendigo <laughs> yeah. don't eat people yeah don't eat people is, is, turn is the into moral this of the story thing but i just found it interesting to kind of look through all of the different lore and of course there's there's more even than what we covered here because, you know, we don't want to talk on and on and on for hours, but because there is a lot that goes into this and this is something that seemed to be very ingrained into these specific tribes. Yeah. This is something that they, um, I don't know if they still necessarily fear it, but that they definitely did fear it as an actual physical thing um, as well as something that's not physical, Yeah. you know, as a spirit and just an analogy for... Uh, you know, a negative connotation for something. Yeah. And and I just kind of found that, and I just kind of found that interesting. And the Wendigo also looks really cool, but <laughs> <laughs> I also would never want to see that thing in the forest. Yeah, or no. I would shit my pants and I would run the other way as yeah, you should. Yeah, I, 
I mean, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but, like, the one in Antlers was, like, oof. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. But I also will say it's <laughs> it's fairly typical. I mean, if you've ever seen a sketch of the Wendigo yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. fairly typical to what you see, but I just felt like it was I, done pretty well. That one scene with the... Yeah. That yeah. was gross. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, oh, okay. It, it, it was kind of gross, yeah. And for, I was disappointed by the movie, but I did like the cinematography. Like, the setting of it was beautiful and haunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the whole movie just felt cold and depressing, which yeah. I did really... I love the atmosphere of the movie. That was by far the best thing it did. Mm-hmm. And, like, all the performances were good. I just... I don't know. There was just a lot of things about the movie in particular that um, I didn't like. And especially after reading all the lore, I just felt like they could have done a little bit more with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's like kind of a, if you will say like a twist ending at the end, which I just kind of think was predictable and not great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But yes, I mean, uh, is there any stories of the Wendigo you would like to share with us? You know, let us know if you like, if there's something that we missed or if we messed up, you know, something like that. Or if you have your own Wendigo experience by chance, maybe you're looking this up because you're like, I want to tell someone about my Wendigo experience. Let yeah. us know. That'd be fun. That'd you can be cool. email us. You can message us. Um, do you have any suggestions for future episodes of this? You know, let us know. See, I mean, anything that's creeps, creatures, or haunts, like, related, just let us know and we will um, consider making an episode of that because it's just a constant thing of us trying to find, uh, you know, content to make for yeah. the podcast. And it's not always the easiest to kind of figure out exactly what we want to talk about so if people mm-hmm. kind of tell us what they want us to what they want us to talk about it makes it a little bit easier yeah but yes and again make sure you if you're watching the video make sure you like and subscribe if you are you know just listening to it subscribe and if you're listening to it on apple podcast specifically I, I, make sure you leave us a five-star review it really helps with apple podcast not all podcasts allow you to leave reviews but if yours does especially like if it's apple podcast make sure you leave us a five-star review and yeah. type a little nice thing in there helps us out a lot when people are uh, searching and looking for recommendations to new podcasts on the platform itself. And, of course, again, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure that you click the notification bell. Do it away. Do it away. Oh, that's, that's fine. I warned them. <laughs> and, uh, yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. No!